he's less than keen. I can't stand blended whiskies. As far as I'm concerned, they're gut rot, they're paint stripper, they only have one use, and that is to bio tatties. I'm about to meet a man in a moment who reckons he's about to change my mind. <laughs> I write. Hello, David. How are Richard you? Patterson is no ordinary whiskey blender. He's been master blender here at White and Mackay in Glasgow for 40 years. Come on through. This is, uh, this is my sample room here, my sort of, uh, I call it my oh. treasure chest. Wow. Lots of different styles and bottles of all descriptions are here. Every one of these uh, bottles here tells a story. The dark art of blending perfectly good malt whiskey with inferior grains began with this scoundrel, Andrew Usher, in 1860. Why the hell blend malt whiskies in the first place? During Andrew Usher's time, he was using single malts, which were very harsh, very aggressive, very peaty, medicinal, smoky. As soon as he adds the grains to the malts, he tempers them, he relaxes them, and they become much more approachable. And it was successful, so successful that people changed, in fact, from uh, cognac, which was the main drink, onto scotch whiskey. And that's what the secret is. That's Blending. your story and you're sticking to and it. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> that's not enough to convince this sceptic, yet. But Richard's clearly not shy when it comes to the art of persuasion. Lesson one, whiskey nosing. No, 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 you've got to be gentle. I was gentle. This is, this is, listen, you need to take your time. You need to bring it up and say, hello. Then you go back and say, how are you? Then you go back up and say, quite well, thank you very much. You need to be much, much more gentle with it. Don't be in such a hurry. Okay. No, 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 you don't. you're being so quick, you've got to okay. take your time. Remember, yes, you were be, remarkably listen, quick. This is a beautiful woman, you've got to approach her. Be gentle. Hello. That's it, pull back, that's it. Then go back to it. Forget the alcohol, come into it. Let it open up. How are you? Let it show itself. Okay, that's so it. I'm no expert when it comes to nosing, but surely Richard can't teach me anything about tasting whiskey. No, just put it in the mouth the way I showed you. That's a big mouthful. That's it. That's good. That's great. Now keep it out there. Keep it in the middle of the tongue. You'll see the intenseness of the flavor. Keep it there. Keep it there. Keep it there. And swallow and then take a big deep breath. Wait for it. Wait for it. Big deep breath. That's it. That's it. Okay. Keep it there. <laughs> keep it there. Keep it there. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, five. three, two, one, zero. When I pulled the cracker, it wasn't to be stupid. It was to make sure your body is now opened up, opened up. Now take the rest of the whiskey, keep it there. That's it. Just let it go over, okay? Just keep it there, keep it there. Because this whiskey is a single malt, Dalmore. It's not 10 years old. It's not 20. It's not 30. It's not 40. It's not 50. This still is the most expensive whiskey in the world. Only 12 bottles. 60,000 pounds for one bottle. Are you kidding? No. The most expensive thing you'll ever have in your mouth. But it is the most delicious whiskey I've, I think I've ever tasted. Yeah, it's but... It's quite, quite beautiful. Oh. That, was, that was Nirvana. That seriously was the, utterly the most delicious whiskey I've ever tasted in my mouth. The most delicious drink. And it was so unusual, it was unlike most other malt whiskies or any kind of whiskey I've tasted in my life. OK. Richard's convinced me that he is indeed a whiskey wizard. And now for his next trick. He's going to blend a whiskey especially for me that he assures me I will enjoy and he seems to have done his homework. I've looked at your character in the early part of your life and what I'd like to do is say it's got boldness, it's got brashness to begin with but as you've matured and become more famous, in fact uh, you've softened down. Because you're born in 1950, we've actually used 50 individual whiskies here. <laughs> Sure so, first of all, eight grain whiskies. Isn't this great? These are over 15 years old. Just making sure they have a nice mix. So you pick up the glass like this and then you put it on the floor. Okay? <laughs> now that's the beginning, okay? Now what we want to do is to bring some more energy into it. We want to bring energy, backbone structure. So first energy of all, into your whiskey. And now onto the good stuff, the malts. First up, the lowlands and spacesides.
This is uh, more like, this is a beautiful woman. She's very elegant. Last, but certainly not least, to the Highland Mall. Fetakir, now this is a beautiful... Uh, Fetakir is a lovely whiskey. I very had one on Friday evening on the island of Rothsey. And we're going to, um, we're going to see uh, how this one's performed. I'm down to do that bit. These are nice, dark whiskies. Whiskies that are old, dignified. Like yourself, you're a dignified man. Yeah, but I'm not old. Like... Reggie, careful. No. Are you going to put a wee bit of every single bottle here in just, just, Yeah, just enough to, to caress it. The moment of truth. Will the David Heyman spirit of life be the blend to convert me to the dark side? Remember the first whiskies you began? They were fairly hot, they're fairly aggressive. Now we've brought the space sides, the highlands, and your nature is now coming in towards the end. That soft, loving appeal. Okay, so bring it up and do it very My slowly. wife should be listening to this. I love the soft, loving part of my nature. Now this will be fairly hot to begin with, but what you should see emerging is a softness towards the inner. Keep it there, remember, the top of the tongue, underneath the tongue. Richard, this is a damn fine blend. It's beautiful, but this is just really to show is. you that if you mix the old grains with the malts, they are sensational. Now how do you enjoy it? What do you do with this whiskey? You have some coffee, one mouthful, let it go down. Put it in the mouth again, let it go down. That's the coffee, warmed your palate. Then I give you a bitter chocolate, 86% cocoa fat. Let that melt in your mouth. That will then combine with the whiskey. The whiskey will then combine with the coffee. What do you get? A multiple orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, I can have a case of multiple orgasm, please. <laughs> but it's, but it's, and you don't get much better than that. But Richard had one last treat up his sleeve. It's a, a blending certificate telling you've created your own blend. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, I cannot thank you enough. This is a real, real treat. And you have changed my mind. You have. You very definitely have. I'm, you've changed my mind to the extent that I'm now only ever going to drink 60,000 pound bottles of whiskey <laughs> from that one. If only I could afford it. Next time on Made in Scotland, Alistair Campbell brushes up on, yes, his bagpipes. Ronnie Corbett takes on a titan of the golfing world. I don't know why I'm bothering now. I tell you, I can't get inside you. Huh? While I head to New York for Tartan Week. Being Scottish means the world to me. Well, I would like a glass of David Heyman. Yes. For more on Made in Scotland and exclusive web-only video extras, go to stv.tv slash Made in Scotland. Next tonight, the news at 10.